Welcome to my channel. Today, I want to share Steve's story, where his wife cheated on him, destroying their five-year marriage. As night fell, I looked at my wife lying next to me and quietly reached my hand into her blanket, feeling her delicate skin. My mind couldn't help but wander. Why don't you understand me a little? My wife pushed away my hand, wrapping herself tighter in the blanket. I sighed and withdrew my hand. After all, it had been six months since we had been intimate. But my wife had been under a lot of pressure lately, with the college entrance exams approaching. She was tutoring a male student named William, and he often came to our house for lessons. She said, helping students improve their grades is a teacher's responsibility, I empathized with her struggles, taking on all the household chores every day and even sending our daughter to my parents' house. After all, when I got married, I promised that I would fully support her career. As I lay there, half asleep, a beam of light hit my face. I was a bit excited, thinking, could she be planning a surprise for me, half closing my eyes, I waited staring at the text on the screen. I saw her start typing, today is the seventh day I've been thinking about you, I really want to stay at school. I feel suffocated at home, as I read the messages, my blood seemed to freeze. She continued, let's book a private room tomorrow. I'm almost certain I won't be able to control myself, the profile picture of the person on the other end was familiar to me because he messaged my wife every weekend, saying, Alice, I'll come for lessons this week too, all the pieces suddenly fell into place. I clenched the bedsheets, wanting to confront my wife right away. But I knew she wouldn't admit anything without actual evidence. I spent the entire night without closing my eyes, thinking about our past and our daughter, who was still so young. The next morning, my wife got up early and complained as she woke me up, Steve, why didn't you wake me up this morning? I'm going to be late, you know, I watched her rush to get ready, putting on a flawless appearance. Just before leaving, I asked her, honey, I'm not feeling well today. Can you stay home and take care of me, Steve, can you please stop being so selfish? I'm already exhausted from work. Don't I deserve some time to relax after work, she snapped back before slamming the door. I sat on the bed for a while, feeling like a lifeless body and then mechanically went downstairs and hailed a taxi to the cinema where they had planned to meet. At the cinema entrance, I quickly spotted William, holding my wife's hand, as they walked inside. She leaned into his arms, wearing a sweet smile. I took out my phone and secretly followed them. They entered a private room, and on the way, they couldn't resist passionately kissing each other. I entered the adjacent room but the soundproofing was poor, so I could hear their voices clearly. How was it, baby? Wasn't I amazing? William asked. My wife giggled in response, Oh, why are you asking me such questions? They continued flirting, accompanied by rhythmic vibrations and water sounds. I pinched myself repeatedly, forcing myself to stay calm. After all, I still had a daughter. When all the sounds finally stopped and night fell, I took a taxi back home. As soon as I entered the house, my wife shouted at me, Steve, where's dinner, wait for it to magically appear, I replied coldly. My sudden indifference left my wife bewildered, but soon she became angry and went to the couch with her blanket. I lay in bed with my eyes open, waiting until I heard her even breathing on the couch. Quietly, I got out of bed and opened her phone flipping through her chat history with William. One message caught my attention, actually, in the previous year, there was another student I had a special liking for, doing the math, my wife had been working at this school for six years, so she had been involved with students since our daughter was born. Ever since we had our daughter, Li Jia, my wife consistently rejected any intimate moments between us. She claimed, Steve, can't you understand? Having a child has taken a toll on me, and I need to repair my body each time I heard her say that, I felt guilty. It wasn't until our daughter turned over a year old that she got drunk and we had a moment together. But afterward, 
she pointed at me and said, Steve, can you please stop touching me? My body feels uncomfortable, recalling her behavior, I felt a sense of injustice, but I was afraid of angering her and causing harm to her body, so I endured it. Now, our daughter is six years old, and our intimate life can be counted on one hand. With more than six months since the last time. I always thought it was because of her poor health that she resisted me, but I never imagined that she simply didn't want to be intimate with me. All her desires were given to someone else. We've been married for seven years, and for six of those years, she has been cheating on me. And what was I doing? I was worrying about the damage to her body and treating her like a princess. A vengeful thought began to form in my mind. In the morning, my wife, for the first time ever, woke me up, saying, Steve, wake up and have breakfast, the morning light illuminated her, casting a holy glow upon her, and I couldn't help but think of the past. A voice inside me tempted me, saying, give her one more chance. Part ways amicably. A peaceful separation is also a good option, Alice, have you been hiding something from me? If you have, speak up now, and I won't hold it against you, Steve, what are you daydreaming about all day? Are you bored at home? My wife threw a pillow at my face, and all my softness disappeared in that moment. She continued to insult me, you can't get promoted or get a raise. All you do is fantasize, I interrupted her, Alice, our daughter has been at my parents' house for a month. Do you miss her, Steve, let me tell you, don't bring up our daughter? Before we got married, you promised me that nothing would interfere with my work. A hint of guilt flashed across her face, but she chose to raise her voice. Fine, you're great. You'd rather tutor others for free than even take a look at your own daughter. As soon as the words fell, we both fell silent. In that moment, my heart died completely. What is it about this person that's worth my softness? Wife, don't be angry. Let's go and visit your parents this weekend. I proactively changed the subject. Oomph, don't think I'll forgive you just because of that, wife, this time, it's hard to say who will forgive whom. I secretly linked her salary card and ordered new furniture for my in-laws' home. My in-laws always boasted about their scholarly family background. Whenever they spoke to others, they couldn't go three sentences without mentioning their family values. According to my father-in-law, my wife was the epitome of their perfect family values. In his words, he would say, our entire family is cultured, naturally aware of propriety, and would never do anything that tarnishes our reputation. During the time I was pursuing my wife, I was constantly scrutinized by my in-laws because I was just a poor student from the countryside. They would often say, if our Alice is not marrying a high-ranking official, at the very least, she should marry someone from a similar social class. But your family, do you even have a few books? I felt embarrassed and lowered my head, but I gathered the courage to say, I will strive to be on par with Alice in the future, they responded with mocking laughter and left me sitting alone in the living room. Even after I gave them a hefty dowry of 880,000 yuan and put my wife's name on the newly purchased house, they still looked down on me from the bottom of their hearts. However, at that time, I believed that true love could overcome anything. It wasn't until our daughter was born, and they came to visit, that they started nitpicking everything about her. They would say things like, her nose is too flat, she didn't inherit our superior genes. For the first time, I couldn't hold back my anger and warned them. Later, when our daughter grew a little older, they voluntarily suggested taking care of her for a while and providing her with early education. Believing that they were both teachers by profession, I reluctantly agreed and entrusted our child to them. One day, I decided to visit our daughter in the afternoon and caught her standing on the balcony reciting lessons. It was scorching hot, around 39 degrees Celsius, and the living room didn't even have air conditioning. Her face was flushed red, and her bangs were damp with sweat. As soon as she saw me, she burst into tears and said, 
Daddy, I'm not a big fool, she fainted right after speaking, so I rushed her to the hospital for fluids. Upon further questioning, I found out that my in-laws used to punish her for reciting too slowly. They would make her stand on the balcony at noon, scolding her and calling her a big fool, I was infuriated, but bound by the respect for elders, I couldn't resort to physical confrontation. I only issued a stern warning, never touch our child again. Let my parents help us take care of her, they sneered and mocked, your family is a low-educated group. What good child can you raise? It only highlights your poverty, I shattered the table in anger and declared, you will never get near Lucy again, from that day on, neither I nor my daughter ever went to my in-law's house. Today, I'm curious. How would this morally upright family react if they found out that their daughter has a habit of cheating, carrying the projector I bought with my wife's salary card, I stepped into my in-law's house. As soon as I entered, my father-in-law sarcastically addressed my mother-in-law, saying, some people just lack proper upbringing. How else could they speak such words to their elders? Not like our family, not like Alice, my mother-in-law chimed in, that illiterate country bumpkin, how can he raise a good son? I'm even embarrassed to mention their family values, my wife, with an arrogant expression, looked at me and then turned to complain to my in-laws, Dad, you have no idea. I ignored them completely and focused on setting up the projector. Once it was installed, I secretly used my wife's phone to set up screen mirroring and disabled message notifications. After my wife finished venting, she glared at me and took her phone with her to the bathroom. My mother-in-law sat next to me and slammed the table, saying, Steve, your parents didn't raise you properly. Today, I'll teach you a lesson on behalf of your parents and show you how important family values are. Just as she finished speaking, the humming sound of the projector caught everyone's attention. What is this? My mother-in-law exclaimed. The projector displayed my wife's chat page prominently. My wife was shamelessly flirting with someone named William, sending him her photo. William couldn't hold back and immediately replied, Baby, you look younger after cutting your bangs, humph, it's all thanks to being with you. Then my wife sent another message, I wish our baby would grow up quickly so I can bring you home to meet my parents, in an instant. The person who was just confident and ready to lecture me now looked like a chicken with its neck squeezed. Their faces turned bright red, and they couldn't say a word because they all knew that the person chatting with Alice at that moment wasn't me. I stood up and overturned the table. Well, this is your great family values, isn't it? Cheating is part of your family values, my once condescending father-in-law and mother-in-law lowered their heads. Steve, don't be impulsive. There may be a misunderstanding, my father-in-law said sincerely. A misunderstanding? What misunderstanding? The evidence is right here. Isn't it true that like father, like son? Does dishonesty run in the family? My wife, hearing the argument, hurriedly came out of the bathroom and said, Steve, can't you understand anything? What are you causing now? As soon as she finished speaking, my father-in-law slapped her hard. How dare you speak? How shameless can you be, my father-in-law genuinely shed tears, and I stood in place, deciding to fuel the fire. This avatar looks familiar. Who is he? I snatched my wife's phone. Isn't he your student? So, every week he comes to our house for tutoring, but in reality, he's here for an affair soon, their kissing photo was projected on the big screen, with the backdrop being our home study. Suddenly, my mother-in-law's eyes rolled back, and she fainted. My father-in-law quickly dialed emergency services and then slapped my mother-in-law a few times. Alice, if anything happens to your mother, you get out of this house. My wife cried uncontrollably, trembling. She hurriedly followed the ambulance to the hospital. I watched them busy themselves for a while, then took a rest, had dinner, and went to the hospital. To my surprise, as soon as I arrived at the hospital, I saw my father-in-law clutching his chest, shouting, 
a cursed daughter, our family is doomed, I curiously glanced towards the hospital room, and with that one look, I gained a new understanding of my wife and my anger burned even hotter. My wife was kneeling in front of her mother's bed, crying. It has come to this point, and I have nothing else to say. But I truly love him, I just want to be with him, my father-in-law entered the room and pulled her up forcefully. Alice, have you no shame? He's so much younger than you, and you're already married, my wife shouted, true love knows no age or time boundaries. I just love him. Why won't you support me, then she knelt down again in front of her mother's bed. Mom, Dad, if you don't agree, I will kneel here forever, just as her mother regained consciousness, she fainted again, and my father-in-law also collapsed to the ground, clutching his chest. My wife quickly called the doctor, and after another round of resuscitation, she knelt on the ground once more. I was already speechless and infuriated by my wife's behavior. It wasn't that she lacked the courage to stand up against her parents, it was just that she hadn't met someone who made her heart flutter. In college, my wife was a top student, while I had average grades. However, I had been trying my hand at business since those days, and in my senior year, I made a small profit. That's when I fell in love with my wife at first sight. Although I couldn't match her family's wealth, I gave everything I had to pursue her. Despite her coldness towards me, she always said, Steve, I am a rational and restrained person. I don't have that kind of crazy passion for love, I believed her words, so even though I was always giving, I believed she loved me, but she just couldn't express it. After graduating from college, I discussed marriage with her parents, and her family demanded a dowry of 880,000 yuan. At that time, my side business encountered a great opportunity but tied up a lot of my capital. I didn't have enough liquid funds to meet their demands. I discussed with my wife, darling, can we give them 400,000 yuan as a dowry for now, and I'll make up for the rest later, but she replied, Steve, my parents raised me with difficulty. Shouldn't I respect them and not defy them by being with you? I was rendered speechless by her words and had to find a way to gather money elsewhere. Eventually, my parents, upon learning about the situation, secretly sold our ancestral home to help me raise the required funds. Fortunately, that project turned out to be quite profitable. I bought two houses in the city, one for my parents and one for us. My wife was extremely unhappy about this and kept complaining, saying, Steve, you're going too far. Why did you only buy a house for your parents? Are my parents not important? On several occasions, she even involved my parents. I sympathized with her and never brought up the fact that the 880,000 yuan dowry was still with her parents. But she became even more relentless, using her concern for her parents as an excuse to berate me while turning a blind eye to her own parents' mistreatment of mine. I never expected her to have such double standards. The parents she professed to love unconditionally were easily overshadowed by a young boy she barely knew. I quickly contacted a lawyer, who brought me a divorce agreement. Since my wife was at fault, and I had paid for the house in full, I planned to give her only 30% of her current savings and seek custody of our daughter. After reading the agreement, I intended to give it to my wife, but my father-in-law opened the door and his first words were, Steve, it's Alice's fault. Can you give her another chance? We're getting old, and we can't bear losing face, you heard it too. Your daughter is head over heels in love. Besides, why should I give her another chance? My father-in-law's face turned unpleasant, and he reverted back to his condescending attitude. Steve, being able to marry Alice is your blessing. In my opinion, a man shouldn't be too petty, if you want me to be generous, I'll introduce a new man to my mother-in-law tomorrow. He's younger and more handsome than you. Will that satisfy you, Steve, you're being insolent. Is this how your parents raised you? No manners. His finger was almost poking my face. You have manners? First, 
you demanded an exorbitant dowry of 880,000 yuan, and now your daughter is having an affair with a student she barely knows. Maybe it's a problem with your ancestors' graves, otherwise how can all your descendants be so unworthy, my father-in-law was so infuriated that he clutched his chest again, and at that moment, my wife barged in. Steve, are you even human? How can you talk to my father like that, uh, yes, of course, it's true love when you anger your father to death for your lover. Speaking the truth is considered rude, and you're the one with double standards, I didn't give her a chance to speak and handed her the divorce agreement. Stop talking nonsense and sign it. We'll get divorced tomorrow, she glanced at the agreement and said, only 30% of my savings? I don't agree, this is a mother who didn't even glance at her daughter's custody rights. Alice, everything in the house was bought by me, and the savings are all earned by me. Your salary is all yours to use. If you keep bothering me, you won't get a dime. Alice looked at her father with a pleading look. And her father glanced at the agreement. Steve, if you want a divorce, we'll fight you for custody. He resumed his condescending attitude. You wouldn't want your daughter to be harmed, would you? We'll see her eventually. Sometimes family matters are better left to the police, I was so infuriated that my head buzzed, but I forced myself to look at Alice. What do you think, I'll listen to my father, fine, fine, then let's not get divorced. I tore up the agreement and looked at my father-in-law. Dad, let's live a good life from now on. As for Alice, you try to talk some sense into her, that's right, Alice, this is the path you chose for yourself. I hope you don't cry too bitterly when the time comes. I secretly had my parents install a hidden camera in our home and connected it to the internet. In front of my mother-in-law, I became the perfect son-in-law, and the fellow patient in the same hospital room kept praising me to my mother-in-law, this is your son, he's really filial, my mother-in-law was flattered by the compliments, and her remaining conscience finally awakened when she looked at me. Steve, Alice has done you wrong, Mom, I'm just feeling very frustrated inside, I'm upset, what do you suggest then, my mother-in-law asked. Let her write me a guarantee letter. If she ever cheats again, she leaves with nothing, well. My mother-in-law looked at me with a hint of contemplation in her eyes. Mom, if Alice's affair with the student is exposed, won't you and Dad also be ridiculed? My mother-in-law raised her hand and called my father-in-law and Alice over. Alice, listen to Steve, write a guarantee letter, Mom, I don't want to, before Alice finished speaking, my mother-in-law slapped her. Do you want to drive me and your father to death? Alice, if you have any further contact with that student, I'll jump off from here. Seeing my mother-in-law climb onto the windowsill, Alice finally started crying. I'll write it, I'll write it, okay, reluctantly, she tearfully wrote the guarantee letter, and under the coercion of her parents, she handed over her phone. Give your phone to Steve and let him delete that person. Your father will arrange for you to be transferred elsewhere in the next two days. I took Alice's phone and secretly uploaded the chat records to my cloud storage, then deleted William's contact. After arranging everything, I returned the phone to Alice. My father-in-law sat there giving orders, Steve, from now on, you two live a good life. Don't mention divorce again. We can't afford to lose that person in our family, Alice, you need to straighten up too. You know, our family's reputation can't be ruined by you. Otherwise, your mother and I will pretend we don't have a daughter like you, understood. The voices of Alice and me rang out simultaneously. Alice, however, continued to fiddle with her phone. Due to her transfer back to her previous school, Alice had to go back there for work handover in the past few days. Meanwhile, I continued to diligently take care of my mother-in-law by her bedside to the extent that I even stayed in the hospital. After several days of not going home, I finally saw what I wanted through the camera. I quickly called my parents, Dad, please take Mom and Lucy back to our hometown. 
I'll come over in a few days, that I put my parents' house up for sale, slightly below the market price. Soon enough, the house was sold. My daughter found a new kindergarten in our hometown. I felt a bit excited at the thought of returning to familiar territory. But after being away for so long, Alice didn't even think of calling our daughter. However, this conveniently fit into my plan. A young couple moved into the neighboring hospital bed, showering each other with affection every day. My mother-in-law looked at me lying on the bed and said, Steve, if you and Alice could be as affectionate as them, maybe she wouldn't have done what she did, yes, perhaps if we had some alone time, we could rekindle the passion of the past, my mother-in-law lowered her head, lost in thought. After a while, I casually brought up a topic, I heard from our colleague that they went to the Maldives once, and when they came back, they were as affectionate as newlyweds, well, why don't you and Alice go there too? I'll foot the bill. My mother-in-law handed me a card. Sure, I'll go to the office today to wrap up my work. I returned to the company and completed the procedures. Soon, I would be transferred back to the branch office in our hometown, and I was eagerly looking forward to that day. When I got home, I told Alice about the travel plans. She had an unwilling expression on her face. Steve, can't you stop bothering me? I'm already tired, but it's your mother's command, and you wouldn't still have lingering feelings for William, would you? Stop making baseless accusations. She immediately started shouting. Better not have any, or else you'll end up an orphan. I smiled, walked into the bedroom, took out the new bedding, and laid down on the sofa. The next day, my in-laws were discharged from the hospital, and I bought plane tickets. On the way to the airport, I looked at them and said, Mom, Dad, when this trip is over, I'll give you a big gift. I hope you'll like it. What could you possibly give? My father-in-law looked at me disdainfully. It's mainly for Alice and Dad. You'll find out when the time comes and no matter how they pressed me for answers, I remained silent, leaning back in my chair. When we reached the boarding gate, Alice suddenly became restless, constantly looking outside. William's figure finally appeared in the distance. I discreetly made a trip to the restroom, forgetting to close the camera lens. When we boarded the plane, Alice's eyes were wandering, and her lips were swollen. I pretended not to notice and put on an eye mask, falling asleep. Upon landing, Alice immediately turned on her phone and started taking selfies. She then clutched the keyboard in her hands, typing nonstop. Wife, let's go to the hotel first, okay? On the way, I kept reminiscing about our university days, and there was a hint of warmth in her eyes when she looked at me. However, it quickly shifted back to her phone, capturing her attention. When we arrived at the hotel, I voluntarily suggested sleeping on the couch. She glanced at me and walked into the bathroom with her phone in hand. Alice is forgetful and often misplaces her belongings, so she keeps all her documents in a small pouch. After counting them, I put the documents back into her pocket. Once everything was arranged, I informed my parents and daughter that we were safe. The scenery in the Maldives was indeed beautiful, and it had a calming effect on both of us. Alice's frequency of chatting reduced as well. On the last day, we decided to visit a popular tourist spot known for its picturesque views. There was a famous bathing area where people took stunning photos. Alice wore her swimsuit and went in, taking numerous pictures. When she went into the water, she handed me her phone. Before Alice departed, I asked her, Alice, do you miss our daughter? Why are you suddenly asking that? It's nothing. I took her phone and headed to the airport. On the way, I compiled all the chat records between Alice and William from the past few days into a PDF file I had prepared in advance. Then, I sent a mass message to all her contacts and groups. Two minutes later, I sent another message, this is a personal conflict between me and my wife. I accidentally sent it to the wrong people. 
Please do not spread it. After completing these actions, I turned off my phone and boarded the plane back home. As soon as we landed, I immediately reported to the Education Bureau, providing detailed evidence of my father in law's past corruption and bribery during his tenure as the headmaster. I accidentally stumbled upon this information while taking care of my mother in law. He kept a record of every gift he received, which I found in a notebook placed on the bedside table in their bedroom. The school swiftly initiated an investigation, and many students who had been intentionally mistreated by him for not giving gifts provided evidence. His reputation, which he cherished the most, was finally shattered. Meanwhile, Alice, who was abroad, found a phone and called her father to inform him about losing her phone. To make matters worse, she couldn't find her documents. My father-in-law and mother-in-law were panicking, but what made them feel even more ashamed was when someone sent them the PDF file. When Alice called again, they simply said, we don't have a daughter, and hung up. Soon enough, they found their way to me while I was house hunting with a real estate agent. Steve, everything is your doing, isn't it? Alice only made a small mistake, and you treated us like this? Is it necessary? My father in law shouted hoarsely, losing his once refined demeanor. It was evident that many people wore masks, only revealing their true nature in critical moments. A small mistake? Well then, let's see the small mistakes your daughter made together, Steve, you're insane. Your whole family deserves to rot, including your daughter. I had the security personnel throw my father-in-law and mother-in-law out, but what saddened me was that our home's security cameras, connected to the internet, were hacked by unknown individuals. Videos of Alice and William's affair in our home, along with those chat records, spread everywhere. The school promptly responded by expelling Alice and William, while the police took my father-in-law into custody for investigation. My mother-in-law, unable to bear the situation, suffered a stroke and remained bedridden. When Alice finally managed to find her documents and sought help from the embassy to return to the country, she was greeted by whispers and social death from those around her. Alice was brutally beaten by William's parents. They called her a seductress and blamed her for luring their son, questioning how she could do such a thing to someone so young. She cowered and tried to shield herself as people around her aimed their phones at her. Alice looked at William with pleading eyes and asked, What's going on? We were truly in love, right? Tell them, William's mother turned to him and kicked him, saying, Tell them what really happened, it's true. She seduced me, William replied. Very well, you despicable woman. William's mother scratched Alice's face with her long nails while William stood by silently, not uttering a word in her defense. I watched the entire spectacle unfold and kindly reminded Alice, your mother is in the hospital, and you've made her ill. Alice went to the hospital, and upon seeing her, her mother-in-law became even more agitated. She threw objects from the bedside table at Alice, and soon she began convulsing. Doctors rushed Alice's mother-in-law into the emergency room. Despite their efforts, she tragically passed away. However, she left Alice with her dying words, You are not my daughter. Alice looked dazed and distraught, crying uncontrollably outside the hospital. It's not me, it's not my fault, of course, it is. Now nothing will stand in the way of you and your true love. By the way, your father is in prison too, Alice, overwhelmed by the continuous blows, couldn't find the words to respond. I kindly took her to visit her father in prison, but to our surprise, he refused to see her and said, we have no relationship anymore, words spoken in truth, Alice. You are now an orphan I handed her the divorce agreement, stating that our assets and our daughter would be mine. She grasped my sleeve and knelt down, pleading, Steve, I'm sorry. Let's live a good life together. We still have a daughter, yes, we have our daughter, a daughter? Now you remember her. Alice, I gave you a chance, but you didn't want it, but I am her mother. 
Alice clung to my sleeve, refusing to let go. How many times have you held her since she was born? She's six years old now, and for five and a half years, it was me and my parents taking care of her. Have you ever spent time with her? Alice, she hasn't even tasted your milk, I kicked her away, and she began to cry and laugh hysterically, holding her head. I deserve this, ah, uh, after releasing her emotions, she signed the divorce agreement and went with me to finalize the divorce proceedings. A month later, when I saw her again, she had become as thin as a sheet of paper. Before leaving, she said to me, Steve, please apologize to our daughter for me, upon returning to our hometown with my parents and our daughter, they seemed particularly happy. They took our daughter out every day to play with our old neighbors. Our daughter had reached the age to start elementary school, and one day she came home and asked me, Daddy, why do other children have their moms with them, but I never see mommy, she blinked her big eyes at me, and my heart ached with pain, not knowing how to answer. Did mommy make you unhappy, why would Lucy say that? I gently touched my daughter's hair. Because I saw mommy holding another boy's hand before, but daddy, he's not as good as you, I couldn't hold back my tears any longer and cried, does Lucy miss mommy, no, mommy has never hugged me. It has always been you and grandma and grandpa taking care of me, after saying that, she hugged me tightly with her chubby little hands. Daddy, I don't want to make you sad. I want you to be happy every day, just like Lucy, okay, daddy promises you later, after discussing with my parents, I decided to tell my daughter about our divorce. Unexpectedly, she said, daddy, as long as you're happy. I'm happy because I'm already very happy now, and so, I accompanied my daughter as she grew up day by day. Suddenly, one day, someone called me on the phone and said, hello, mister. Alice has passed away. Can you take care of her final arrangements? I returned here with my daughter and laid Alice's ashes to rest. She left some money for our daughter. I heard that she had a difficult life during these years. William was expelled from school and lacked direction. He never went back to school, and William's mother frequently brought people to beat her. Eventually, William took out his frustrations on her as well. Dying so early may have been related to the constant abuse she endured, but what does that have to do with me, each person's destiny may be determined at the moment of making choices, and this was the ending that Alice had personally chosen for herself. Daddy, let's go home. I miss Grandpa and Grandma, alright, let's go home, I sat on the plane with my daughter, knowing that I might never have any connection to this city again in my lifetime because I have already started a new life.